Good afternoon and welcome everyone. My name is Katrin. I'm part of the iGraphics marketing team and I would like to welcome you to our web session on the topic Making Processes Measurable, How to Capture and Visualize KPIs in iGraphics. Today, my colleague Katharina Hecht, Pre-Sales Team Lead for the region EMEA, will give you exclusive insight into the world of performance measurement within iGraphics. Uh, in the next 245 minutes, we will cover how you can identify and link KPIs, how you can design performance diagrams and dashboards, and much more. Before we start, I have some organizational notes for you. You are all muted currently and cannot ask questions via microphone during the web presentation. But of course, we're curious about your feedback. That's why you can enter your questions at any time in the Q&A window at the bottom and we will go through them at the end of the presentation. This is all, so the best way to contact us if you experience technical issues like audio problems, please just tell us and we will try to solve them. One additional hint, if you want to ask your question incognito, please click the relevant box on the bottom of the Q&A window. And now I'm handing over to my colleague Katarina and we will start with today's webinar. So have fun. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Katrin, for the introduction and a warm welcome from my side. Um, as Katrin already mentioned, my name is Katarina and I will be your host today for the web session. So I am gladly presenting the topic, Making Processes Measurable, How to Capture and Visualize KPIs in iGraphics. Before we start with the main theme, KPIs, um, Key Performance Indicators, I would like to give an introduction on iGraphics as a company and a little bit into our iGraphics tool suite as well, because a couple of you are new to iGraphics. Um, that means um, we should also give a little input here. So in order to start, I prepared a couple of slides just to give you an insight iGraphics by the numbers. So we've been founded in 1991. That means we've been in the market for quite a long time. Um, we are active all over the world three locations, uh, Portland, Austin, and today I'm talking to you via Munich, but we are active in 80 countries, also through a broad partner network. This is how we can achieve that. We can proudly call 10,000 plus customers, our happy iGraphics customers, and two thirds of the Fortune 100 also rely on iGraphics. We also have a number that five of the 10 largest US banks use iGraphics. But for sure, and maybe you are not from the banking industry, but from another industry, processes are applicable in any industry. So it's not our core focus here, but we are used in almost every industry. In order to prove that, a um, couple of statements from our customers and a couple of logos that you see at the bottom. So um, we are active in different industries as I already mentioned, and this slide just gives you a quick overview of a couple of reference clients that we have. Now we often hear the question, why should we use iGraphics? And um, this is the answer. Well, this uh, together with uh, the live tool demonstration that I will give you, I would like to highlight a couple of points here. So first of all, why do we use iGraphics or why should you use iGraphics? Well, it's quite easy to make it available throughout the enterprise. So we have a web-based centralized access easy for everyone. You just need a web browser. That's it. Um, also, we're for sure solution provider in the field of business process management, but this does not only include processes, which we will see in a minute. It also includes advanced enterprise modeling. And this is especially important for the, um, yeah, for the field of KPIs as well. I mean, I also have to map a strategy, goals, in order to understand how good is my business performing. I would also like to highlight the point that we are SOC2 certified. So our company, iGraphics, has run through the certification and uh, we can now state that we are certified based on the SOC2 standard. And that means, well, we can prove we have standardized processes within our company as well with regards to data security, for instance. Now, speaking about the solution portfolio of iGraphics, um, this is where I'll be giving you a quick introduction in the different areas that we solve. So first of all, I'd like to start with a slide where I can state the different challenges of a company and the different challenges affecting the business. 
And this might also be your challenges, or you might also have a couple of different um, same challenges maybe in your industry. So first of all, what we have normally is a strategy or different strategies, and strategies might be derived into certain kind of goals, and goals can then be linked back to our processes. So that means we can now see processes well as core element, and processes can either be described in diagrams or documents, or they are not yet described. So let's say that we have processes in the company, but maybe they are not nowhere documented. It's not necessary, they are documented, but still processes are there. Then we have for sure an organization or organizations. Um, within the organization, we have different jobs, people, employees perform the jobs. So that means why are the job an employee has participation in a process, but an employee might also be linked back to a role and therefore also participate in a process. So that means your job, this is what's written on your business card, but you might also have additional responsibilities, additional roles. And so as an employee, you have different relationships to a process. Now, the main theme of today is the performance indicators. So we can measure the performance of processes with so-called performance indicators. And why do we mainly do that? Well, we want to assure that we achieve our goals. We set goals based on strategies with performance indicators. We can assure that. And performance indicators are usually displayed in charts. And charts help employees to understand how is the company performing. So is our performance indicator green, yellow, red? And how is the current performance of the process or the company? Now, on the other hand, it's not only just positive. We also have a lot of different risks. Risks are affecting our processes, but risks can, in the best way, be mitigated by requirements and controls. That means we have a certain set of laws and regulations. Um, for instance, uh, GDPR, we have SOX requirements in the banking industry. So all of that leading to certain kind of controls. Those mitigate the risk in order to have a lower risk affecting the process. Now controls can also be linked directly to processes, naming business rules. That means 4I principle, management sign off, all those things would be, um, yeah, a standard business rule that can also be laid. Besides human resources, what's also important uh, and becoming even more important is applications. Applications run on the server. A server has a database, network, a whole infrastructure. And this is also linked back to your processes. So it's becoming more and more important to understand the impact of applications but also to understand the impact of external factors. That means external agents, that's our clients, that's our suppliers, any kind of institutes that we communicate with. And this is also important to map in your process management. Now you see quite a complex picture already, but well, um, if you work in process management and um, I'm sure you do, or you have had uh, touch points with process management, it's not about one process, but it's about multiple processes. So that means, um, yeah, it's not that simple and we have a lot of different relationships building up. And uh, this is what you will see now uh, in the slide popping up that we have different relationships, a lot of different applications, requirements, jobs, processes. And that means an even more complex picture is building. So it's important to not lose the control in the complexity. And that's why iGraphics offers you a solution set in order to address all these different areas. So how do we do that? That's mainly based on the business process management cycle. Now the business process management cycle would start with modeling and design initially. So that means we capture a process, we assign responsibilities, and we publish the process. Then an optional step, but a recommendable step would be execution. That means we can run a process in a workflow engine. So for instance, you use iGraphics process automation, and then we can delegate, escalate process and work in that process directly. Then uh, what is the topic of today? Mostly is the monitoring part. So we also have the capability to monitor live and control KPIs. So we can define them, assess them, link them to our processes. 
And with all that, we can uh, lead into the phase of optimization. That means we can then evaluate and display KPIs. We can use extensive reporting, plus we can then run a process simulation. And after our simulation, what would we do? Well, we would go back to the modeling again in order to remap the process. So this is the tool set based on the business process management cycle. Um, so we have the iGraphics platform in the center. The iGraphics platform is the core component of iGraphics. It's just a web platform. So you enter a web browser and you can access the iGraphics platform. Then uh, I will also be talking about the module performance management today. So this is one of the extensions that you see in the outer green circle. And performance management allows you to um, identify and assess KPIs, which is what we are going to talk about today. Before I can show you how you can create a KPI, we have to take a few steps back. And um, I want to give you a quick introduction into the modeling and design phase first, because we can only measure a process if we already have one. So that's where we start with the graphical modeling first. And um, the graphical modeling has a couple of highlights um, that I put here on the slide as well. So um, first of all, what we are gonna see now in the tool is a web-based centralized access, intuitive modeling directly in the browser. Uh, we can map BPMN 2.0 generic templates. You can even map customer journey maps, for instance. Plus I will give you a quick overview on the versioning and approval capabilities. Now on the right hand side, you see the screen, but this is not live. So what I'll do, I'll switch live to the tool and you will also see the world map that we've just seen in the slides now live in the view. So you can, uh, you can see here at the top, I'm logged in in the web browser. So easy access for everyone. And then I can start navigating through my process landscape. Now, a couple of words here about the licensing and the roles. Um, we usually talk about four different license types, user roles, that would be viewer, collaborator, designer, and architect. And currently I'm logged in as a viewer. That means I'm just interested in reading processes. So I'd like to get to know the processes located in Europe. Then I can just click on Europe, and then maybe I'm interested in seeing all the processes in the UK. Then I can click on this and we see, well, we only have one location in the UK. So I would like to see the processes um, here for the location of London. And if you click on that, you will open the process house directly. So this is one possibility to enter the tool as a viewer. So I'm interested now in different processes and I, I would like to get a little more information about the process which is called market and sell products and services. So you can easily click here, um, open the next level and it's quite intuitive for the end user because whenever you click, you see the little breadcrumb navigation at the top where you can easily go back and open another process so you can directly access the process that is important for you. And in this case, I'm interested in seeing the process which is called manage orders. So you can just open that one with a click. Now this is the lowest level of the process landscape here in that case. There's no limit, however, no limit um, what's about levels or complexity. You can build as many levels as you want. But um, what customers usually do is that they build some kind of landing page, making it easier for the end user to navigate through the tool and to work on, um, yeah, to work on, on the usability. All right, before I switch into the extended enterprise modeling, a couple of hints about the collaboration. So first of all, I was talking about the license of a viewer. That means I'm viewing information. Now, the iGraphics platform also allows you to collaborate easily. And collaboration means uh, it's not just something what you access, but you can easily run cycles and communicate diagrams to certain people. That means we have some kind of inbuilt workflows. So for instance, we have review, approval, and endorsement cycle. And with that, you can now use this diagram that I've shown you communicate um, to certain groups, certain people, ask them to run a review cycle or ask them to approve something. 
and approval especially is important because if something has been approved it has a green light and then it can be seen by the viewers so this is also something that i'd like to mention that we do not distinguish between modeling and portal or something it's one centralized platform and once you approve something it is published and can be accessed by the viewers also i'd like to highlight that anything that you work on in iGraphics has a full-blown history and this history is audit proof. Why? Because all the versions cannot be deleted. So you see if you scroll down um, you can track who created which version, when has the version been created, which comment has been left. Um, you can roll back to older versions. That means if you made a mistake you can use the version before and you can also see anytime something has been approved who has approved this, then has it been approved, and also if something has been endorsed or reviewed. You can also easily compare two different versions, and uh, this is a feature I'd like to highlight, especially for the continuous improvement of our processes. Now what we can see in this little overlay is the change that we made from one version to the other version, or you can also have this as a side-by-side -side comparison and highlight this also in a table where you can directly track anything that has changed. And this will also help the auditor if you work, if you're certified, if you have an audit. Well, this is how we change our processes. All right, now, um, so far about the graphical modeling and the entry point, well, this is not the focus of today. So I'd like to switch back a little and um, talk about the next preparational thing for the performance management which would be the extended enterprise modeling capabilities. So if you remember the, we call it spaghetti chart. So this chart with uh, the lines and the different relationships. So if you remember this one, um, this is, well, encounters um, below the term ent extended enterprise modeling, because this is where we have our centralized object structure stored, where we can work on relationships such as RACI metrics where we can reuse objects in order to track changes and where we can also run some analysis from. Showing that in the tool, how does that look like? I take the example again of before. We'll open the window here on the left-hand side and what you can see now on the right-hand side, the diagram on the left-hand side, you see the so-called enterprise object and while well, all the relationships we map them with enterprise objects so anything in iGraphics is called an, an object and can be reused. Now what we see here is some sort of process narrative on the right hand side the diagram on the left hand side well the process is called is called manage orders who is responsible who is accountable consulted or informed which IT systems are supporting this process do we have incoming and outgoing work products? In this case, we can directly track, do we communicate with external factors, for instance, a customer, and all that operational information is shown here. Now it's called extended enterprise modeling. So it's not just about operational information, it's also about um, understanding strategies and goals. So what you see here are so my strategies, so I'm linking that back to excellent customer support, long-term customer retention. Based on that, I have a goal which is called customer satisfaction index of 98%, and this is also linked back to a process. Now we can also track uh, requirements. That means um, any kind of GDPR norm, ISO norm can directly be linked in order to match the process here. And the last thing I'd like to highlight here about the extended enterprise modeling is also the possibility to link any kind of documents. And here, what is also quite important to mention, um, iGraphics can store any kind of documentation directly within the repository. So you don't need to link to a document management system. You could, but um, you can also import this into iGraphics as we have done that with the uh, uh, template pricing here, then people can directly use the preview. They can download the file if they need it. Well, and that means um, there is no limit. Documents are also stored. Document have a version. Documents can be approved and you can use it as a document management system. 
All right, so far about the introduction. Now it's about the main theme or the main topic of the webinar, the monitoring performance management. Now with all the preparation that we did, so first of all, I've shown you some graphical diagrams, some landing pages, then I've shown you the, um, the object window on the left-hand side. Now we can work on the performance management and monitoring. Why do we want to do that? Well, um, the highlights are on the left-hand side. We want, maybe want to access live data from third-party systems. So maybe we have an ERP, CRM, other tools, and we really need to display the data in coordination with the processes. Also, what we like to achieve is to link the KPIs back to our strategy and to our goals in order to visualize how good do we achieve our goals. And we also want to uh, yeah, link the real-time data to support our decisions. So that means to have those dashboards that we see on the right-hand side and to understand how they really support my uh, decisions. So KPIs, uh, first of all, I'm staying here in that view because if you scroll down, what I can see here, the last relationship maintained is called is measured by. And is measured by, this is quite important here because there I can have different KPIs and um, those KPIs now have a value as well that I can directly see displayed here. So for instance, my process manage orders has a KPI which is called total order count per day, which is currently at a value of 800. So 800 means 800 total orders per day, current value. Now, if I click on that KPI, well, then I, um, yeah, I can see the KPI narrative, uh, as I would call it, the KPI overview. I could leave a summary and a purpose. So I could state some uh, words here about the meaning of the KPI if I want that. Then I can also see directly the performance of the KPI. And if you hover over that, you can directly track, well, it's currently amber. What does that mean? It's some sort of warning already. So it's not good, it's amber, but the value has gone up, which is an improvement, and it has gone up by more than 500%. Previous value was 120. So now you may wonder, where does all this data come from? First of all, I need to make some settings um, so that I can tell the tool when is, it, when is something green, amber, or red. And this is done on the settings tab. So whenever I define a KPI, I have to um, work on the settings here. So I can either, first of all, select what type of performance indicator is that. In this case, it's just a standard KPI. Could be operational, could be strategic, tactical. You can define process performance indicators. So a lot of different um, yeah, subtypes. And this would allow you to use the reporting later to understand how many KPIs do you have and where. Then you also have to define the type of data. In this case, it's a numeric, time-based. What does that mean? Well, at a certain point of time, we measure a value with a number, and it, we do that in order to display a chart to, uh, that shows us the development over time. What is quite interesting is also the roll-up indicator. I will talk about that a little later in, in the session but just um, a couple of words on that already. A roll-up indicator allows you to calculate a value based on indicators that are below that indicator. So this could be the sum of different KPIs, this could be the average, um, and in order to display an overall value. A unit, well, a rating system, now it's RAGAR, uh, which means red, amber, green, amber, red. So this is what is displayed here. Uh, Lower than 300, it would be red. Between 300 and 800, it would be yellow. Then it would be green. And then higher than 1,000, it would be red again. So this means we want to have values that are somewhere in between here. And our target value is 700 in that case. You might notice this little fact identifier here. And uh, this is where I'd like to talk about the system integration as well, because our iGraphics performance management module is delivered with an um, uh, iGraphics data integration tool. iGraphics data integration is a tool based on ETL technology. So for the techies below you, 
um, ETL is extract transform load. That means the iGraphics data integration can access data from third party systems, which could be an ERP, CRM, SAP system, any kind of tool database. Then it transforms the data. So there's some sort of graphical script running and then it loads the data into the KPI in iGraphics. The KPI is identified through this little fact identifier. That's why I'm talking about the integration here. And the scripts can also be scheduled. So that means uh, you can run a script if you want every minute, every second even. Um, however, well, you have to calculate the performance of, of the machine as well, but um, we also have a client, they do an update of KPIs like every five minutes. That means the script runs every five minutes and then you have close to reality KPIs in the tool as well. Now you can either use the script in order to enter data or you can go to the data tab and enter a value manually. Well, in this case, I will be doing that manually because I want to show to you the effect that it has. Now what I'd like to highlight here today, it's the 20th of February. I want to enter a new value. Let's just put 750. Click on add data point. And now you have a new data point and we can see the history of all data points here as well. Based on everything that has been entered, you automatically get a chart and the chart can now be filtered. Just show me one month, three month, six month, all values year to day. So you can dynamically filter. We also have this little slider on the bottom where you can easily just display certain amount of time. And then I'd like to go back to the initial page because what has changed now, if you remember, this has been yellow, now it is green. Green means if I hover over it, it's good, the value is good. It has gone down, which is an improvement, and it has gone down by 6.2%. Previous value 800, current value 750. Well, all of the charts um, can then be combined into different kind of dashboards. So what I have here is just one chart, one KPI, a very yeah, microscopical view. Uh, let's put it like that. So as, a, well, as an analyst, I'm more interested in seeing the bigger picture or maybe I'm a CFO, so I'm interested in financial KPIs or as a chief process officer, I wanna see a broader perspective of the process performance. That means I have the possibility to define different KPIs and aggregate different performance indicators. One example of uh, such a dashboard can be seen here. So um, this is a customer satisfaction dashboard. I have a chart here displaying the customer satisfaction in different regions. And uh, what you have here is also the roll-up indicator. And uh, this is the blue line. The blue line measures the global customer satisfaction. The red line measures the customer satisfaction in APAC, the gray one in EMEA, and the green one in North America. And the blue one is a roll-up indicator, which takes the average value of all three customer satisfaction regions. We can combine that into a pie chart. Um, so this would also be possible to compare different performance indicators. Plus, if you scroll down, um, you also have the possibility to work on a performance tree and a performance tree is uh, usually something that is really helpful because let me just go one step back again because if you just see this one customer satisfaction index of 98 percent and you see it's currently yellow your your goal then you can open the next level and wonder why is this value yellow so now imagine you log in, you see one KPI, it's green, everything is fine. If something is red, well, then you have to dig deeper. And then you maybe see that the customer satisfaction in North America is really bad. So it's red, it's just 86%, it has gone down. So if you open this one, you can now track that it has gone down since 2017 constantly. And then you might run further analysis. Why is this the case? And um, this allows you to take decisions in order to track how has the performance gone down. This is also 
um, displayed in a table. Um, so you can also have different views here. And just to show you how the dashboards are created, well, that's quite easy. You can click on add a new gadget, then you can select what you want to see, maybe this performance tree, and then you can just configure what you want to see in this dashboard. So this is really what you see is what you get. Now, on the dashboards, what I'd like to mention as well is one thing which is important, and uh, this is the right access for the right people. The dashboards, um, especially KPIs, are not always to be seen by everybody. So that's where you can work on the permissions. That means here you can define who is allowed to see what and why. And um, if I click on view effective permissions, now I take my colleague as an example. So I want to see what are her permissions. Then I can click on um, why does she have the following permissions. And there you see our extensive role model in the background. So she's an approver, annotator, administrator, and that's why she has all of the permissions on that dashboard. Now, usually you define certain groups. We can import groups through the Active Directory. That means you can make dashboards easily accessible only for certain users and groups in order to uh, yeah, display the right information to everyone. Another word about the licensing, dashboards are usually visible for any collaborator. So that means any license type higher, including collaborator, so collaborator, designer, architect, can access the dashboards and can access the analysis that I have here. There's also a possibility to make KPIs easily accessible for viewers. And um, therefore, I'd like to show you one example with a compass. So this is another way to display KPIs. Um, what we've seen in the beginning when I was entering the iGraphics platform was the process house, so the navigation the graphical navigation through the process landscape. And I could also imagine that to have with a strategy landscape, for instance. So as I already mentioned, KPIs are not only um, to measure processes, but we can also measure our goals. So what we see here are four different strategy perspectives, maybe similar like a balanced scorecard. So I would like to access now the customer um, strategy. So if you click on that, we can see the five different sub strategies. Now I'd like to see the strategy which is called excellent customer support. If you click on that one, um, you will see some target uh, landscape. And here, especially, you can also see the little color icons, and those are the KPIs and their current values. That means customer satisfaction APAC, yellow, EMEA, green, North America, red which is what we've just seen in the dashboard as well. For the viewer to be seen, so you decide if you want to activate this or not, and the viewer can also click on this little enterprise object icon, can see, well, this little flag describes the goal customer satisfaction index, who is responsible, who's accountable, which KPIs are in the background, what is the current value. So you really decide who is allowed to see what and why. In order to give you also another outlook, because we've just talked about the dashboards and the KPIs, but we um, iGraphics allows you more analysis possibilities, and uh, this is also especially related in the field of reporting. So let me just give you a couple of quick examples here. So <clears throat> maybe I want to see um, different reports. Um, that means based on my process landscape, I have the possibility to directly derive a RACI matrix. That means I can see all processes, who is responsible, accountable, consulted, informed. Um, those can easily be filtered. So that means you can just uh, start typing, filter for director if you want, and then you would also be able to download the data uh, and to download the report especially below the background of um, auditing. Uh, maybe you want to get certified. So you have different requirements. Then you can also run a report where you see all of the processes, all of the requirements, and which requirements are used in which process. Now just print this report out, hand it over to the auditor, and this is the proof. Well, we have processes in place that fulfill certain requirements. 
and this is also linked in iGraphics. By the way, this information is maintained by the license type architect. So I have not mentioned the architect license, but the architect usually is some sort of process manager in the company. And uh, this is the person or the people who work on, uh, on this information. But the reports can again be accessed by everyone. So that means that's an easy analysis that you can provide to anybody uh, besides you include or exclude people through the permissions. All right, so that has been quite a lot of information. Um, so this is where I would like to switch back and uh, give you just a quick summary um, before we answer your questions. So just a slight reminder for my side, if you have questions at the bottom of your um, Zoom window, there is the Q and A button. You can click on that and you can type in your question. Uh, if you want to ask it anonymously, just highlight, uh, just tick the box, and then we can answer your questions in a couple of seconds. Before we do that, um, just a quick summary. How do, you get, how do you achieve now your journey to measurable processes? First of all, we start, and this is what we've seen first, that we have to capture and map the processes. So if we don't have processes in place, we cannot measure them. I think that's um, obvious. So what we've seen was an entry point. I showed you a process landscape. That means uh, you could navigate through the process landscape. I could understand the different diagrams and I could understand the relationships because in the second step, the relationships are defined. That means I enrich my uh, diagrams with enterprise objects. I can link initial KPIs and I can create certain gap reports. And then the goal for sure is to assess and visualize the KPIs. So I want to aggregate data to KPIs, visualize them in dashboards, prepare the data for a sustainable analysis, um, also having the performance trees where I can aggregate different KPIs. Let me just switch to another thing, um, um, just to give you a quick introduction to the deployment and hosting options. So iGraphics is either hosted as a cloud or on-premises solution. And um, you don't have any difference between cloud or on-premises from, um, from an end user perspective. That means um, it's a web application either hosted by us, by our data center provider, or um, on your premises. Um, but for the end user, it's the same. The end user accesses through a web browser and can do all the same. It's just um, your decision if you want to use the cloud solution or the on-premises solution. OK, so that's it first from my side. And with that, I'd like to hand back to Katrin and see if a couple of questions are already in. Thank you, Katarina. Um, and thanks for adding some questions in our Q&A box. So let's start with this one. Um, can reports also be exported to distribute them beside the online representation in iGraphics? Uh, yes, for sure. I mean, I already just gave a little hint. There is some kind of download button, so you can easily click on that button and then you will get an automated Excel report. So the Excel report can then be distributed offline. Just um, a little reminder, whatever you export might be already old again. So the latest um, approved version is always in the web, but for sure you can export this into Excel and distribute offline or hand over to your auditor. Okay, thank you. The next one, um, who can enter values for a performance indicator from a license perspective? Is there a possibility to allow this to be done by a broader audience in the company? Uh, well, that's a good question. Um, well, so yeah, if we distinguish four licenses, if you were collaborator, designer, and architect, then um, architects are usually the process managers. So architects, they have the overview, they can work on the whole enterprise architecture, they understand the spaghetti chart, if I put it like this. So what they can do is they can define a KPI. So for instance, for that process, we have to measure um, the amount of orders entered. But maybe they don't know the values. So that's why they, 
they have the possibility to enter the data values, but this is where we also allow lower licenses to enter data values. So this means um, a KPI has to be defined by an architect, but a lower license type like designer or collaborator could also enter data values because a collaborator usually is a process owner and has the better overview of the process performance and can then enter the values as well. There's also another possibility. We can use our REST API and you can have a technical help user with a licensed collaborator that just imports values from, from a script, from an Excel table. Uh, so this would also be possible in order to allow people to enter value into Excel. Could be anybody then. Then you hit a button and then it is automatically imported into iGraphics. Okay. And the next one, um, is there any way to link the KPIs together? Um, the questioner means how to define the leading and lagging KPI. Um, yeah, there is the possibility to um, have like roll up performance indicators and then the performance indicators that roll up. Um, so that means we have three and they are rolled up in one. The three that are rolled up, there you can also define um, a performance indicator that is overruling the others, which would be the leading performance indicators. So this means if customer satisfaction is read in North America, the um, overall performance indicator, the roll up should turn red instantly because this is my leading performance indicator and the other ones, the lagging ones, they would not matter in that case. Okay. And we have a cloud-based question. Uh, can I connect my internal systems to the iGraphics platform on the cloud? Meaning, can I import data from my servers to a cloud instance as well? Or do the systems need to be in the same network? OK. <laughs> um, yeah, tricky question. I think the setup would be like, um, I have my data stored somewhere in-house, maybe SAP, which runs on premises, but I want to use the iGraphics cloud. So um, yeah, the answer is yes. The iGraphics data integration component, uh, any kind of script can import from anywhere when you have access. So you have access to your internal network, you have access to um, the iGraphics cloud. So this should be possible without any issues. Um, that means you can combine the two different worlds together and have the data also uh, displayed. Okay, and I would say the last one, um, any other questions we will answer um, afterwards in email. Um, how do typically uh, data integration projects start? Is there a scoping for duration of any typical definition project? <laughs> well, <laughs> quite hard to give a number. Uh, I cannot give like a number of X days um, this always depends on the amount of data. This always depends on the complexity. Uh, first of all, what we do is, um, or you have to have a solid basis. So usually you don't start just with KPI management. You can, but it's not the usual way. So first of all, uh, processes should be defined. And uh, what we usually do in that case is, is to have, um, yeah, to have some sort of proof of concept. That means we take one process, we define the KPIs together with you, we analyze where are the data, how can we get the data, and then how can we import. Um, this is done in a scoping phase, then we test that together with you. And for sure, we have um, our customer success team, and they gladly help you with that. So we can define that together. But it's hard to give a number of days, hard to give a number of duration. So this always depends on the case here. OK. So time is up. Um, we will answer all other questions via email, as I just said, and also send you the link for the recording of the session. And so I want to thank you for your attention. Stay tuned for any upcoming webinars of us and have a nice day. Thanks, everyone, and goodbye.